is that we were, we we're sent out here um, as, among as wolves. Sheep amongst wolves. Right, sheeps among wolves. So a sheep is a defenseless animal. All the Lord told us to do is to come out here and to bring this word out and to teach it. And that's it. It's very simple. Go on, brother, you want to say something? I thought you were going to say something. Go on, brother. No, no, I ain't going to say something. Can, Can I just say yeah. something about about yeah? Sheep is very um, discerning. Yeah. Because he because he, he has to um, because he's vulnerable. He has to uh, use um, use more more discernment to avoid yeah. trouble. And yeah. they don't respond to any any shepherd. They know the shepherd's voice. Mm -hmm. And that's I'm talking about on the farm. Yeah, it's yeah, in the yeah. scriptures. It's in the scriptures in in um, John 10. But it's, that's on the right. farm too. Right. That's it. That's a beautiful point. Go on, brother. Zephaniah three and eight. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord Jehovah Yahushai. And to the day that I rise up to the prayer. So we have to wait on the Lord until he rises up to the prayer. All right? Because the prayer of Yahweh Shah is Esau, this, this devil. He's going to be the one taking them out of this, this, um, this setting. Go on, brother. For my determination is to gather the nations uh -huh. that I may assemble the kingdoms. Okay. To pour upon them mine indignation. So what does that mean? That goes into the world war. The third world's war that's being prepared on this earth to happen. So the Lord is allowing all of these nations to get prepared and put on their gear and their helmets and their bucklers and their shields, man. <laughs> I'm not talking literally, I mean metaphorically. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Go on, brother. But my, my determination is to gather the nations. Yeah. That I may assemble the kingdoms huh. to pour out them my indignation. To pour upon them my indignation. It's like what happened in Beirut, which I believe the Israelis had something to do with that. You know what I'm saying? And I believe this information that's solidifying what I'm saying. There's, there's footage of it being a missile that was shot. Huh. The actual footage is there. Yeah. It's there. Huh. So the, 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 the thing about it is, is that this world war is definitely in, in the making of prophecy to happen. So this is how the Lord is going to get rid of these nations and deal with these nations up front. We ain't, ain't no nigger going to come out of the woods or any form of neighborhood that's going to chat nonsense about oh, we got to get arms and we got to do this and we got to do that. We don't got to do anything but simply do what the Lord told us to do in His way. All we got to do is sit back and watch these devils go out of power. All right? And then once we get the spiritual power, then we can then we can get into action. But right now, we got to be cool, man. We're fishing right now, but soon we're going to be hunters. Exactly. We're going to hunt the elites out, you know? Yeah. But that's what, that's what the spiritual power. Go on, brother. For the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For them when I turn to the people a pure language. Right. That they will make call upon the name of the Lord Yahweh. They may call upon the name of the Lord Yahweh. So we have the pure language. Alright? And we have the name of the Lord too. We, we have the Lashwan Kodash. We have the Hebrew. Certain brothers are not so fluent in that particular Hebrew as other men are. You know what I'm saying? But we have the we have the Hebrew, we have the name of the Lord. You got guys saying, Well, how do you know that that's his name? Or well, by that same logic, you can also say, Well, how do you know that Jesus is his name? Which through a certain amount of information has been found out. Jesus is not is, is not his real name. Okay? Jesus is not what you call the Messiah. Because basically the term Jesus is more of a Greek kind of term. Jesus. Why would you call a man, a Hebrew man, um, his name? Why would you call a Hebrew man in uh calling his name in the Greek? You can't do that, man. You gotta call him his name in the Hebrew because he was a Hebrew. Alright? Going, brother. And back in those times when Yahweh was on the scene, no one was calling him Jesus Christ. He was known as Jesus. He Jesus. Okay, go on, brother. And they may call upon the name of the Lord Yahweh Yahushai to serve him with one consent. Right, that they may call upon the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai and serve him with one consent. So in order for us to serve the Lord, with one consent, a part of prophecy would be that we would have to have his name. And Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is the name. Those are the names that we call upon. But when, we're, when we're in trouble, when we do call them those names, we are delivered out of trouble. And I myself have experienced this, being in this truth. Okay, when them demons is attacking you and, you, and you're in them cells <laughs> and shit, you're getting arrested. Man, I've been delivered out of them situations because of those things. Go on, brother. It is the brother of our heart. Let's go to Proverbs. Yeah. 18. He gets, he gets the same thing you get and too. Then, huh. The name of the Lord Yahweh Yahushai is a strong tower. Yep. And the righteous runneth into it. And I'll say. And he's safe. Exactly, man. So when you're calling his name Jesus the Christ, man, you ain't safe. You're out there for a lot of the demons to attack you. <laughs> 
You're out there for them missiles to get at you, man. You're out there for them families to get at you when it's all said and done. So you gotta call on his name. Once you revert back to his name in the last one for Dash, then you good, you safe. You ready to go. You you good for the going. <laughs> the scriptures say, how can Satan cast out Satan? So you're not casting out no demons Shut with that up. name Jesus. You're actually putting demons on people by putting on that name Jesus. You're not casting out demons. You're actually casting demons on them. Because that, that name's got an, a, a demon attached to it. Exactly. Man. And the scripture is also saying not to make any mention of any other gods. So when you're calling the name, when you're saying the name Jesus, you're making mention of a different God. Because there's, there's a spirit behind it, like your brother said, man. There's a false, there's a demonic spirit behind the name Jesus, man. What you got, brother? Um, so that's what it's all about. It's all about the ministry of right now, man. On how the Lord um, has has died has died on the cross, and so that we can be reconciled and we can have a chance to repent, to be reconciled. I should have said that. Okay. That's what we're preaching right now. That's what it's all about. Go on, brother. Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there any salvation in any other. Exactly. For there is none other name under heaven mm -hmm. given among men, whereby we must be saved. Right, so the name of the Lord is very important. It's highly important. There's no other name under heaven that we might be saved. That's why the scripture says, Whoso shall ever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, right? You have to know his name. His name ain't God. His name ain't Jesus Christ. These are not his names. So if the Lord has an elect that he established from the beginning of the earth, they're going to have those names. Okay, there's not going to be no, well, we're not really sure. The reason why you, you're not sure because the Spirit ain't dealing with you. If the Holy Spirit was rocking with you, then you would be confident in, in um, accepting those names. Go on, brother. Mm -hmm. So can nobody come around on YouTube or in this physical, you know, in, in, in the physical and tell us, oh, well, we're not really sure about the name. We don't know if, 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 if that's the Hebrew or whatever. You, you, you can't say that, bro. The Lord gave us the Hebrew and the Lord gave us his name as prophesied. Can brother read something out of third chapter again, verse 9. Everything that's happening on this earth is, is basically prophecy, and that's what we got to go by. You yeah. have no choice. Go on, brother. Zephaniah 3 and 8. Therefore, ye wait ye upon me, saith the Lord Yahweh, I was shine mm -hmm. until the day that I rise up to the prey. Until the day that I rise up to the prey, go on. For my determination is to gather the nations. Mm -hmm. That I may assemble the kingdoms. Okay. To pour out upon them my indignation. To pour upon them his indignation. Now the word indignation means uh, God's righteous anger. Mm. So when the Lord makes his second return, well before he makes his second return, he's already got those angels there, right? And those angels are, are responsible for this particular war. Now we can get that in Revelation the seventh chapter, Revelation 7 and 1. Because you have those war angels that are around the Euphrates River. Mm. And they're messing with the minds of these men and getting them hip and prepared and ready to go to battle. All right? Go on, brother. Revelation 7. And after these things, I saw four angels <clears throat> standing on the four corners of the earth. Yeah. Holding the four winds of the earth. Right, holding the four winds of the earth. So what kind of winds are we talking about? Is this talking about... The wind that, that is blowing now, no. It's talking about the wind that's going to come out of those nuclear missiles. Go on, brother. That the wind shall not blow in the earth, nor in the sea, nor any tree. Uh huh. And I saw another angel ascending from the east. And he said he saw another angel ascending from the east. Go on. Having the seal of the living power. Uh huh. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels. Yep. To whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Right, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Go on. Saying, hurt not the earth. Neither the sea nor the trees. Uh -huh. We have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. That's showing you right there that the angels are responsible for this World War III. That's being prepared and ready to go. So go back and uh, get the, uh, the 
description you had before. <coughs> As Romans 12 about being a subject to the higher powers, mm -hmm. and I still had Hebrews 8. Yeah, you go back to Hebrews 8. This is Hebrews 8. And this is, um... No, 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 you know what, you know what, what did you have? Before that, before that was Zephaniah 3 and 10. Yeah, if you get that again, yeah, it was Zephaniah 3, 3 and 10. Zephaniah 3 and 10, it's like a 3 and 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord Jehovah, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, yep. to pour out upon them my indignation, okay. even all my fierce anger. And even all my fierce anger. So those angels, as we just read in Revelation the seventh chapter, they're going to perform that job. And it's going to be crazy, man. It's going to be something like you've never even seen, even in the film. Go on, brother. It's going to be major, man. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Huh. So, so the Lord is saying through uh, the prophet Zephaniah that all of the earth shall be devoured by his jealousy. Why? Because people don't want to follow his ways. People are following different gods and, and, and different ways of life rather than following the lifestyle that was presented to mankind beginning with the house of Israel. So this is why he's going to be, he's going to judge the world. Go on, brother. For then will I turn to a people of pure language. And then will I return to a people of pure language. Now let's back up a little bit because we're moving forward into the future, but we got to back we got to back up to the current time. In the current times that we're living in right now, within this time, the Lord is going to restore to us the pure language and we're going to know his name. You see? So once we know his name, because in order for us to be saved out of this nuclear destruction and the famines and all the above that's getting ready to come on this earth, we have to have the pure language to know his name, to pronounce his name so we can be saved. Go on, brother. That's the order. And they that may call upon the name of the Lord Jehovah, why you have a shred to serve him with one consent. To serve him with one consent. There's brothers all around the four corners of the earth that's wearing the same garments we're wearing. All right? And they're preaching the same thing that we're preaching. All right? You even have a, a brother in uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Philippines. He's teaching his people in, in, in his church. Yahweh and Yahweh shout. So this word has definitely proliferated the whole entire planet. Prophecy again. You can, brother. Give me uh, all what you got. Give me Matthew 24. And I believe it's verse 10. Because <clears throat> it says, When this gospel shall be preached in all of the world, then shall the end come. Now, we know that Christianity has been preached for as long as we can remember. We know that Islam has been preached for as long as we can remember. And we haven't reached the end yet. Yes, all right? But being that this gospel yes. has reached a whole nother level to the point where most people getting, the, getting hit to it now, at the same time, simultaneously, we're seeing the downfall of this system. We're seeing the downfall of this evil, wicked system. And people that control the system, all right, are being exposed for the devils that they really are. And that's how you also know we're at the end, because the people that are in powerful positions in the society have been found out to be pedophiles and shit, sacrificing children, doing all kind of stuff with witchcraft, which we kind of always knew. But all of their dirty laundry is being aired out. Okay, and then before the Lord brings this man down, he has to expose these people. Go on, brother. Matthew 24 and 14. And this is the gospel of the kingdoms shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. For a witness unto all nations. Go on. And then shall the end come. And then shall the end come. So everybody is being a witness to all, to all that we're bringing about. It's the only study we were a very few select men. Now, you have a lot of men that have, that have gotten hip to this information is truth. And it's spreading all around the world. To the point where your celebrities know about us. Uh, to the point where even the government knows about us. Everybody know about us. The media know about us. But they don't want to put us on their media. Because who runs the media? The same people that know we're the Israelites that's proclaiming to be the Israelites. That's why they won't put us on the media. Because if they do put us on the media, we're going to tell the truth and nothing but the whole truth as to what's really been going on in the past and what's going on in the other current. That's why they don't want to put us on the media. Yeah. They know we out here. Go on, brother. The BBC, Sky News, they all know that we out here. But they're not going to put us on there. Yeah. Because believe you me, Britain knows the truth. Britain knows it's the same people that they enslaved. They know exactly who they are. And what they are, as I'm saying, as we've all been saying, that we're the children of Israel. We're the Jews are spoken of in the Bible. 
You understand? And that's something that Britain understands. This is why it was by them that set up the Belfort Declaration. Okay? They know all of this, man. Go on, brother. Romans 10 and 18. And why would they not know? Because when you're dealing with these powerful these uh, powerful people in high positions of power, they have all of the records of every single nation. They know that the Chinese people are the Moabites. They know that the Japanese people are the Ammonites. They have all of the information, the biblical information of all of these nations, including our information. They know more than us. Okay? We just you know, we just recently woke up to this information. But they've been knew who we were going back centuries. So they have the info. So they know who the hell we are. That's why they call, that's why they uh, they got the world to call us black people, to black out the truth, to black out who we really are, and to give us all of these false names right. to hide exactly who we are. Okay, go on, brother. This is Romans 10 and 17. Uh -huh. So then faith coming by hearing. Yeah. And hearing by the word of the most high. Right. So what? faith coming by hearing and what? The word of the most high. Huh? But I say, have, it, have they not heard? Yes, verily. Their sound went into all the earth. Right, and then some went into all of the earth. Go on. And their words unto the ends of the world. And their, world, and their words unto the end of the world. That's the gospel being proliferated. Matthew 24. Let's get Matthew 24 again. <clears throat> Matthew 24 and 14. Uh -huh. And this is the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world uh -huh. for a witness unto all nations. Yeah. And then shall the end come. And then shall the end come. So this word is going to be a witness unto all nations. Why? Because the word of the Lord has gone throughout the whole entire planet. This gospel has gone through the entire planet. Now most people know about their rights. Now most people are here to the eye that, that, that so-called blacks, so-called Latins, Native American Indians, are indeed the children of Israel. And they're not blacks. They're not West Indians. They're not Caribbeans. But they are the children of Israel or whatever tribe they come from. That's who they are. All right? And that's just the truth. So there's no more uh, uh, wanting to be ignorant. We're not in the time to be ignorant. Now, if you want to be ignorant to the truth, it's because you want it. If you want to be ignorant to the truth, you have that choice. But see, a lot of our people, they know what we're bringing out. So because they bear witness to this truth, there's no hope for their sins. Because it's one thing on, okay, you can know you're an Israelite, but are you following the ways of what you, are you following the ways of an Israelite? And if you're not doing so, and you want to continue to live your life the way you want to live your life, then eventually you're going to be destroyed. Okay? There's levels to this thing. First, you know who you are, and then you, and then you practice what your forefathers have done. <coughs> Go on. Um, fin finish with that. Still got Hebrews 8. You're gone. This is Hebrews 8 and 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Yeah. For finding fault with them. Uh -huh. He saith, Behold, the days come. Saith the Lord, you have a shy, when I will make a new covenant. With the house of Israel. And we just read that in the book of Jeremiah 31 and 34. Go on. And with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them out of the hand uh -huh. to lead them out to the land of Egypt. Yep. Because they continued not in my covenant. Because they continued not in his covenant. So the Lord had to pave the way to make another covenant. And this was a better covenant. And we're going to show you why. We just read it already, but we're going to read it again. Go on, brother. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord Jehovah. Uh -huh. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds yep. and write them in their hearts. Mm -hmm. And I will be to them a power. And I will be to them a power. Go on. And they shall be my people. Now we're all going to be married to the what is it? Married to the Father again. We're going to be joined together as one with the Father again. So there's not going to be no, oh, I want to be separate. I want to worship this God and that God and I want to do these other nations that don't know. We're naturally going to be built to do the right thing which is keep those commandments. You understand? That's how it is, man. That's how it's going to be in the future. But what's going to happen is, is two-thirds have to perish and die because they don't want to repent. That's what has to happen first. Once that happens, then they're going to come and bear the name of the elect that, that survived, that was saved. 
and they're gonna have those genetics of simply keeping them off. Go on, brother. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor uh -huh. and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, yep. for all shall know me. Shall all shall know the Lord. Every Israelite is going to know the Lord. And that's why it says in the book of Isaiah chapter 2 that, what is it, um, out of Zion shall go forth the Lord. Because you're going to have regular Israelites that were regular in this world, okay, that didn't have the truth. They're going to be professionals of the Lord too. So basically the whole nation of Israel is going to be nothing but a big gigantic church. Preaching unto the nations, okay, or should I say leading the nations on how to keep them up. Go on, brother. And they all shall know me from the least to the greatest, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. Right, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. See, the Lord said he was going to clean us. Go on. And their sins and their iniquity will I remember no more. And their sins and their iniquity will I remember no more. So this is the new heavens and the new earth. So all that which was in a former age, that's all going to be forgotten about. All of the sins that we committed is all going to be forgotten about. Okay? Now, there's going to come a time where the ones of our people, they're going to remember their ill ways. And the, way, the reason why the Lord is going to make them remember that because so that they can be ashamed of themselves. And with that shame, they can be furthermore moved to do simply the right thing also. While they're under the new covenant at the same time. Go on, brother. I've got Daniel's 12. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince, who standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation. Yeah. Even to that same time. And at that time, the people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. God. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Right, many of them that sleep in the dust shall awake on some to everlasting life now that's, that doesn't that doesn't that's not literal that means that they're going to be reincarnated they're going to be basically as usual you know come back in, in this uh, this life as a newborn baby and that's how they're going to wake from the uh what is it the dust of the earth go on brother and and some to shame and everlasting contempt so they're going to have these thoughts these memories of what they did in the former life and it's going to shame them they're going to hate themselves that's why I said some to everlasting life. Some to everlasting shame and contempt. And everlasting shame and contempt. Right. So they're going to remember certain things. Okay. And that's prophecy too. Go on. Back to Hebrews 8. And where was I? Where was I? At the bottom. In that he saith a new covenant. He hath made the first old. Now which the decayeth. A massive old uh -huh. is ready to vanish away. Right, it's ready to vanish away. Going at that time, right now, it's already vanished away. Because we're not going by the law anymore. We're going by the faith. And by that faith, obviously, we keep the law and believing in Yahweh Shah. Going. Hebrews 9. When verily the first covenant had also ordinance of divine service. Yes. And a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made. The first wherein was the candlestick uh -huh. and the table and the shoe grip, yep. which is called the sanctuary. Yep. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, okay. which had gotten the golden censer yep. and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that mm -hmm. had manna yep. and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant, yep. and over it the cherubims of the glory shadowing the mercy seat, yep. of which we cannot not speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into their first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of the Most High. But into the second went the high priest, alone, once, every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself, but for the errors of the people. The Holy Spirit, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, yep. but at the first tabernacle was yet standing. Yep was a figure for the time then present okay in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect right as pertaining to the conscience yep who stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings yep and the carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation okay but Mashiach being come an high priest of good things right your Mashiach came of high priest of good things going to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, but this is to say, not of his building, neither by blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. Right, because he became the sacrificial lamb. 
So this is why we don't have to, like for example, when the Passover is set up, we don't have to, what is it, put, uh, kill, what is it, kill the lamb and put blood on the doorpost. Because the, his blood was already, um, his, his blood was basically, how should I put it, man? An off, offering. Yeah, he was the offering, and the, the blood that was shed paved the way for us to be okay with the most high. Okay, for a lack of you know, better words. Go on, brother. By his own blood, he entered into once, into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Right. For if the blood of bulls and goats... And Go back again, read that again. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. But by his own blood, because in the ancient world also, the children of Israel, our forefathers, what they used to do is, is when they committed sin, they would get a, a, a bull or a goat or any form of cattle, and they would actually sacrifice the animal for their sins. That was yeah. their offering. But that's all dead it out, because the Messiah became the sacrificial lamb. Right. Go on, brother. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, yeah. And sanctifying to the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Mashiach? Right, how much more shall the blood of the Mashiach, the Messiah? Go on. Who through the eternal spirit offered himself without right, spot. Right, the eternal spirit that offered, what is it? Read that again. How you much more shall spot. the... So like, yeah, move it too fast. I'm just, that's how it is, but having this spirit of, Yeah. Go on, go on, how go much on. more shall the blood of Mashiach, who shall through the eternal spirit offered himself? Right without spot to the most high. Uh -huh. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living power. Exactly. So he's the eternal spirit, which all of the spirits are eternal. Energy is not basically destroyed. Energy transfers for, you know, like for example, our, our energy, our spirits, go from one place to another dimension. Okay, so he was the begotten spirit, the eternal spirit, that was what is it, sacrificed so that we can have, what is it, uh, we, we can have uh, uh, what's the word now? We can have eternal mercy, like like also when you read the Old Testament, it talks about how the mercies of the Lord endure forever. Okay. Now is it mercy concerning all these other nations? No. Okay, like the guy that's behind us, he's most likely an Edomite. Yeah, he looks, he looks like an Edomite as well. He's most likely a need of mine. He's not. He's not under the mercy. He's gonna go in the, in the captivity. He's gonna go into slavery. Okay, because the cup, the, the people that the Lord established the covenant with, they're the people that the Lord is only concerned with. That's why the the, uh, the, the Most High sent the Lord and the Savior to be a vessel to return the Israelites back to His good side. Let's go back and read Acts the fifth chapter again. Acts 5 and 29. <clears throat> and also after that, we can also read Isaiah 40, verse 15. Uh, this is Acts 5 and 29. When Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey the, the most high rather than men. Uh -huh. The power of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom he slew and hanged on the tree. In other words, the cross, go on. Him have the most high exhorted with his right hand to be a prince and savior to forgive repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So Yahweh Shah was going to be that prince and that savior, which really there's no was he is. He was the prince and the savior to what? To give repentance unto Israel. To give repentance unto Israel. The so-called black people, the so-called Latinos and Native American people. They are the, the children of Israel today. Those are the people that he died for. Going all the way back to the covenant, which was uh, made beginning with Abraham, and then his uh, son, Jacob. I mean, excuse me, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the people that are covenanted by the Most High, those are the people that the Most High is concerned. Let's read on. For to give repentance unto Israel and forgiveness of sins. Uh -huh. And we are his witnesses. And we are his witnesses. The men that were back there with him are, are his witnesses. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go read uh, by Isaiah 40, verse 15. In 2nd Ezra, the 6th chapter, verse 56, afterwards. Isaiah 40 and 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. Right. So, Isaiah said that the nations, which really was the Most High, because the Most High speaks through his prophets. So let's read that again. Isaiah 40 and 15. 
Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. And you know I'm gonna I'm gonna prove what I just said. Hold what you got. Give me uh, First Peter's one verse twenty. First Peter's one and twenty. For verily was for ordained before the foundation of the world. I, th I think it's Second Peter. Second Peter's one. Second Peter's one. Right, verse 20. Second Peter's one, verse 20. So I'm gonna back what I'm saying on how the prophets, they were moved by the most high himself. This is why they spoke those words. Second Peter's one and twenty. Mm -hmm. Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private, private interpretation. interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time, uh -huh. but by the will of man, okay. but holy men right. of the Most High. So the, the, the prophecies didn't come by the will of man, but by this, what is it, the spirit of the Most High. Go on. But holy men of the Most High spake uh -huh. as they were moved by as the Holy Spirit. As they were spirit. moved by the Holy Spirit. So that includes Ezekiel. That includes Isaiah. That includes Jeremiah. All of these men were moved by the by the, uh, the spirit of the Most High. Hence, you get the term inspiration. The word inspiration means to be in spirit. Spired. Okay, the word spire means spirit or to breathe. Okay, go on, brother. Actually, read it again. Yeah, first, second Peter is one and twenty. Second Peter is one, verse twenty. Second Peter is one and verse. So I got lost. Oh Sorry. man, it's the flesh. It's the yeah, flesh. it is. It is. I'm slacking today. Because it's the reason why I'm like this. Because it's set out differently. And you know too, it's hot too, man. Uh, second Peter. Uh, right there. Yeah, I got it, I got it. Oh, that's my head. It's a human chapter two. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yes, yeah, it's, it's completely set out different areas. Second Peter's 1 and 20. Knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came in old time, right. but by the will of man, uh -huh. but holy men, but holy men going of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Right, so they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So when Isaiah said what he said, let's go back to what Isaiah said. Was it really him saying it? No, it was the Most High saying it. Because I'm going to be honest with you, right? I didn't really study, man. But somehow, some way, the scriptures is coming out. Why is that? Because it's not really me doing this. It's the yeah. Holy Spirit that's putting scriptures in my head. That's how the Holy Spirit rocks with you going, brother. Yeah. Isaiah 40 and 15. Behold, the nations are of a drop of a bucket, uh -huh. and they are counted as a small dust of a balance. So through the Spirit of the Lord, Isaiah said that the nations are as a drop of a bucket. Go on. Behold, he taketh up the houses of every little thing. Right, so let's say you got a big bucket of water, a big jug of water, and the drippers come out of the water. You're not going to consider the drippers that come out of the water. That's how the Lord views all these other nations. Let me we'll turn this around. <clears throat> All of these nations over here, the Lord ain't concerned with them in terms of saving them. The Lord chose his people. Let's get Daniel, let's get uh, not Daniel's uh um Deuteronomy the seventh chapter. He chose these people only. This 